Hey guys, a quick video on the Ground Zero Hellion 100. Uh, laying out the features, uh, how to dial it in, and uh, a few sample tones uh, to help you get started to find the uh, sounds that you're looking for. So first of all, I just want to describe what the amp is. It's a single channel, uh, high gain amp, um, but it doesn't just do high gain. It does pretty much everything from a clean tone to blues to rock to extremely saturated high gain if you want it. It's very tight. It's very controlled frequencies and tons of clarity and dynamics um, for the level of gain. It's one of the most articulate sounding amps I've ever heard um, at that gain level. You just you, you can hit a, a, a large a open chord and hear every note ring out, um, a lot of definition. So my main focus in this amp was to get extremely tight, but not overly tight, um, harmonically rich high gain, um, no loose flubby low end, I don't like you know, lack of attack on the low strings or, or flubby low strings or looseness. I just, uh, that, that just bothers me. So that's not, you're not gonna find that in this amp. Um, fizz, I don't like fizz either. There's a lot of fizzy amps out there. This has no fizz in the, in the, in the high end. You won't, you won't get fizz or any looseness in this amp. So it's been pretty carefully designed um, to avoid those two, those two issues that are, are pretty common with, with high gain amps. I, I call it, a Markshall is a good good uh, description. Um, it's sort of a mixture of, you know, high gain British style with a little bit of, uh, you know, American high gain um, type tightness uh, and dynamics mixed into it. So it's it's a it's a cool sound. It's a it's a cool blend of those um, types of amps, um, and, and it it excels at the high gain tight great feel, no stiffness, just really good under the fingers type of thing. So uh, what I'll do next is start in the front panel and go over uh, all the features and what they do. So the far left is a negative feedback control. It's super useful on this amp and it's very important in dialing this amp in. It has a very wide range to it, more than most amps do. Um, from zero to six, it's pretty typical taper that you see on, on most amps with negative feedback controls. Once you hit six and a half or seven, it, it really hits hard and you're really gonna see a large increase in brightness and aggressiveness. It's an audio taper pot and it's got a really wide range so there's a lot of variance in the way the amp sounds. Turning it down, you're gonna, get, you're gonna get darker, you're gonna get smoother, and then up is gonna be more aggressive and bright. It's useful for when you dial in high gain or a lot of low end, it helps cut through and uh, keep the definition that the amp's known for. To the right of that is depth. Uh, you can set it anywhere you want really, but uh, I typically have it between six, maybe seven or eight. Brings in obviously uh, a good amount of low end that's still very tight. Uh, for lower gain tones or lower volumes, sometimes it's better to run it lower, like maybe four. Um, that really helps clear up the, the bottom end if it's very low volume. Presence, I typically keep between five and six. I think I have it at five right now. Six is a good place to start. Depending on your room, your cabinet, your guitars, your speakers, all that kind of stuff is going to depend where you, it's going to decide where you put it. But uh, five and six is, is a good place to start. Bass control, typically six or seven is where I put it. But the bass control on this amp, you can turn it to 10 and it still stays tight. Uh, it won't get flubby. So anywhere you want to put it. Uh, mids, plenty of mids in this amp, and those are there for a reason. Uh, you know, keeps the definition, keeps the clarity, keeps the, keeps the, the punch through the, the mix. Four is where I start. I think that's a good balance on this amp for most tones. Uh, between four and six is great, but anywhere you like to put it. Treble, I, I usually always keep it at six. That's, for me, a good setting. Uh, master volume right now I have on this amp at one. Um, I don't need to get too loud for this demo, and honestly, the amp sounds fantastic all the way down to whisper volumes and you, you can honestly set this amp to play in the bedroom at 2 a.m and not wake up somebody that's sleeping in the room next to you it, it can get that quiet and still sound good where you'll hear the the strings on your guitar acoustically over the amp and again there's master volumes in the back uh they're adjustable and i'll uh i'll go over those uh, when we get to the back panel i have that rear master set on around six right now so that brings the overall vol volume down in conjunction with the front master but uh, we won't get too loud in, in the room so the right of that is, is preamp, which controls the first gain stage in the amp. This controls more of the low, low frequency gain. I, I typically say that six to start. It, if you go past six, it'll start to bring in the lower frequencies, uh, get a little bit rounder. I find six is a great balance. When we get into the lower gain tones, into the clean stuff, we'll go below six, obviously. But six is a good place to start. If you pull this out, uh, it's labeled pull cut. It'll knock back the gain a little bit, lower the gain, and it'll reduce brightness. Um, again, that's good for the lower gain, 800 type tones, stuff like that, or, or the clean tones. On previous versions, it's labeled pull boost, so being out would be the higher gain setting with more brightness, and pushed in would be, would be uh, reduced gain and brightness. Same operation, just reversed. Uh, next one is gain trim. 
This controls a different gain stage in the, in the preamp. And this is more of, I call it the upper, you know, mid range G type gain. So the cool thing about this, this gain control is, and I usually start around six on this one, is cranking it. I mean, you can turn it up really to 10 and it won't flub out, won't get wooly. It stays very clear, very dynamic. It just gets more saturated. So you get this really nice, really saturated, really good feel, but it still stays clear and dynamic and you hear all the strings uh, ring out. So I'll, I'll usually start at six and go up to, you know, six to nine typically just to get the feel that I want. Uh, and pulling this one will activate the fourth gain stage. So that's going to add a whole, you know, whole another stain of gain, gain to the, uh, to the sound. Uh, that red LED, as you saw, just uh, come on, activates when you activate the fourth gain stage by pulling the gain trim. However, just as a note, if the foot switch is inserted in the rear of the amp, that light will no longer illuminate when you pull the knob. The light on the foot switch will illuminate instead. So some people have plugged that in and wondered why it wasn't working while the foot switch was plugged in. And just removing the foot switch solved that problem. Okay, we have three, three controls here that uh, you know, are pretty unique to this amp um, that really uh, help, help dial it in and get it... Uh, some good, good sounds. Gain style is the first one we'll go over. It's a six way rotary switch. Rotary meaning it's got six detents. So it's, you know, two, three, it, it stops at each detent. So you got, you got six of them. And what that is, is this amp is a diode clipping amp. Um, so, you know, diodes add compression, they change the feel of the amp. Um, pretty much every diode clipping amp out there has diodes 100% in the circuit all the time. It's just the way they're designed. And it can be a cool sound, it can be great for me. It doesn't work the best for, for my style. I prefer, uh, you know, some different dynamics with the dials not pulling the circuit. Um, and, and then on top of that, there's different types of diodes. So um, there's different voltage diodes that change the way the amp responds and feels. Some can be more raw sounding, some are more compressed, some are darker. On this, this amp in particular, to the far left is the biggest sounding, most open, most raw sounding diode. It'll be the loudest too. As you go to the right, it's going to get darker, more compressed, and the volume will reduce. And you can simply raise the master volume to compensate. So, and each each step, it's it's like in a linear fashion. It's going to get you know darker, compressed, and more raw. And we'll start there uh, to begin with. Below it is the compressed raw control. Guys love this control. This has been a, a huge hit. Um, and what I mentioned on and touched on earlier was, you know, having diodes fully in circuit isn't you know sometimes always the best for a particular style. So. On this amp, full left to the left is diodes 100% in the circuit. So they're 100% affecting the circuit. You're getting all the compression and the, they don't add gain, but it, it's the impression of gain. They clip the signal, um, but that's, it's the feel of increased gain. So as you turn this to the right, you're going to progressively remove diodes from the circuit. Um, and I start about here, like one o'clock. So as you remove the diodes from the circuit, it gets louder. It gets more open, gets more raw sounding. Um, and it's, it's nice to be able to find that balance of a clipping amp versus a non-clipping amp. There's benefits of both. Um, but for me, having a blend, to blend those two characteristics together is really the, the secret for me at least, to get the amp with a great feel, a great response, good sustain, good clarity. All those features really come to play and that knob really helps get there. Um, to the right of that is Aura. This is this could be called a tight control or a focus control, whatever you wanted to call it. Um, people have their own name for it, but this affects the tightness of the amp. So turned all the way to the right, it's gonna have the sharpest, tightest attack. It's gonna reduce the gain just a bit. As you turn up, it's gonna get fuller, it's gonna get a little bit rounder on the low strings, and you get a little bit more gain. So this this is great for you know a brighter guitar versus a darker guitar, single coils versus humbuckers, different cabinets, stuff like that. It really helps give that last couple of percent of the, the, the feel and the tone that you're looking for. And that's what this amp's about, right? It's, it's about guys who are really OCD about what they hear. They wanna be able to control the last few percent of, of the tone. And, and that's how I feel like I am. Like, I, I, wanna, I wanna be able to really, really fine tune the amp to what I wanna hear uh, without getting super really overcomplicated with you know, five band EQs and stuff like that that can um, just kinda drive you crazy sometimes. So we'll start with, I, st I would start with the Aura about 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock. It also has a pull compression feature. So when you pull that out, it changes the compression in the first gain stage. It'll get a little more sag to it. It'll change the feel, be a little bit greasier feeling. Um, that's mainly a feel thing. It does affect the tone a little bit as well. Okay, so the mini switches in the front, um, there's four of those. First one is uh, depth frequency. 
So you have the depth control, and that controls the frequency of the depth in the power amp. It's labeled deep, mid, and tight. Tight is the most balanced setting. It's the most common depth frequency you'll find in most amps, or most uh, British-style amps that are modded out there. The middle, the middle setting is called mid. That bumps the mid-range a good amount. Um, good for like lower gain tones, uh, for like 800 type stuff. And then to the left is deep, which scoops the mids a pretty good amount. That's good for you know the higher gain stuff, drop tune stuff, real tight, you know, chuggy stuff. I would I would use deep. Next over is signal enhance. That's a three-way. It's deep off and normal. When it's set to off, it reduces the gain a little bit, reduces the brightness. Um, set to normal, you're gonna bump the upper mid-range gain. Uh, a little gain bump, a little brightness uh, in the upper mid-range. Set to deep, it's gonna significantly bump the bottom end up. Um, you're gonna hear the amp get really full, um, really big, and it's also gonna uh, increase the gain. Next one, mid structure. Uh, it's labeled full focus and medium. Uh, full is gonna give you the most low mids, the most low end. Um, but then again, at certain settings, you might get on the verge of feeling a little bit, you know, maybe a little uh, lack of attack on the low strings or whatever. So uh, focus will give you the most uh, sharp or the, the most sharp attack, the most focus in the low strings, um, the most clarity overall at the reduction of, you know, lows and low mids. Medium is in between the two. It's the most balanced setting. It's typically where I will start is on the uh, medium setting. Okay, to the right of that is the voicing switch. That, that really controls the overall character of the amp. Um, it's, it's modern, vintage, and classic, and as the name vintage, vintage implies, um, that's the lowest gain, the fattest, the fullest sounding setting. That's, again, the one you're going to use for 800 type tones, uh, classic rock stuff. Uh, when we get into cleans, we'll, we'll use the vintage as well. To the right is classic. It's, it's overall, for me, the best setting. Uh, most guys that have played this amp tend to stay on classic. Um, it's going to add brightness, add gain, gets the amp real tight. Um, real sharp attack. Um, it's just a really good overall setting. And then to the left, far left is modern. That builds off a of classic and just gets more saturated, a little bit more liquidy feel under the fingers. Still stays tight, still has a lot of definition. It's actually a really cool sound, um, but it's just a little bit uh, more saturated. So that's the layout in the front of the amp. Uh, I'm gonna to go to the back and uh, go over the features there, and then we'll move on to some uh, tones. Okay, back of the amp. Uh, we will start at the far left. Um, another sort of unique switch um, on this amp is the ultra tight switch. Um, this, this to me is, is super useful for dialing in the amount of bass in the preamp. And what it does is it controls the bass in the first gain stage of the, of the amp. So it basically starts in the beginning and controls the bass you know, all the way throughout the circuit down to the power amp. So all the way up is labeled ultra tight um, here, and that's gonna get you the tarp, sharpest, tightest, uh, low end in the amp. Great for, you know, super high gain for uh, dark cabinets, um, dark guitars, or down tune stuff. Uh, a, a guy that bought one, one of these amps uh, came by a couple days ago and uh, he plays eight string. We put an eight string to the amp and it didn't, you know, flub out at all. Uh, we had an ultra tight and it stayed super sharp. And, you know, he was commenting that no other amp can really um, handle that amount of, um, you know, low tuning and, and larger strings on an eight, eight string like this amp does. So it'll, it'll, it really has the flexibility to, you know, do a wide, wide range of, of, of tones and handle a wide range of guitars and, and cabinets and stuff like that. So in the middle is labeled balanced. Um, that's where I typically start as balanced, more low end and ultra tight, obviously. Still not excessive, still not flubby, nothing like that, but it, it is the most, you know, balanced tone, obviously. All the way down is, is labeled full frequency. So for guys that like a little bump in the low end, maybe a little bit fatter tone, um, that's a good setting. It's gonna bring in just an extra little bit of bottom end over, over balanced. If you wanna boost the amp, which it doesn't need it at all, um, it sounds like a boosted amp, it feels like a boosted amp without a boost, and that's one of its hallmarks. It does not need a boost, and that's a comment I've got a lot. Guys have called me up and said, you know, how, how do you make this amp sound like it has a boost and I'm not using anything in front? So that's, that's you know, one of the, really good features about this, this amp. Um, but if you do want to use a boost, and, and there's guys that have used boosts with these and they sound really, really good, um, I would use full frequency. Uh, to the right of that is the foot switch jack. It's pretty uh, obvious what that does. The foot switch is included with the amp. It's a two button foot switch. One button controls the third and fourth gain stage. You can switch back and forth. Um, the other button will control the dual masters, which are here to the right. So these, these are the two masters. When you don't have a foot switch inserted in the, into the amp, you'll default to master one. I typically keep it around six. Uh, it just, like I said, it, it, it gives a nice taper to the front master volume. 
Um, usually you'll set this and forget it and then just use the front master to control your volume. You don't have to worry about this or reach behind the amp to adjust the volume. It's not like that. You just set it where you want and then you use the front master to control uh, the overall loudness of the amp. Like I was saying, oh, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but if, if you want to play this amp at, at two in the morning and not wake somebody up who's sleeping in the room next to you, you can absolutely do it. And the amp will sound fantastic. It, it sounds, still sounds really good. You can bump that master one down to you know one or two and then the front master taper will be so good and so precise. I mean, you can get the amp where it sounds great, but it's you'll hear the, the strings on your electric guitar acoustically over the amp if you get that quiet. So that, that's, that could be a benefit for you know some people that want to jam late at night and, and not affect other people in the house or whatever. Um, obviously on 10, it'll be full volume, max volume of the amp, um, but I typically keep it down here. So if you want to use the foot switch, you know, you can set the first master at six, the second one at eight and boost the amp, you know, boost the volume for solos, however you want to use it. Um, next to that is the effects loop. It's the send and return. It's always on. There's no on off switch. It's just part of the circuit. That's the way it works. And then uh, the speaker jacks, two four, two eights, and one six. Then you got your fuse and your, and your power cable and that's it on the, on the back. The back's pretty simple. There's not much to do um, back there. I think the only switch you typically adjust occasionally is the ultra tight. On um, the masters, you usually just set it, forget it, and everything else is obviously the same. Just uh, plug cables in and go. All right, guys, let's get into some tones. Um, I've got a Les Paul with an alternative eight pickup. Uh, plugged in. This is in D standard. It's one step down. Uh, it just sounds really good with this amp. I like this particular pickup in this guitar. Um, I have a slight bit of delay on in the loop. Uh, loop is super transparent on this amp. Um, again, master it's at one. We're very low in the in the room. I'm using an iPhone to record this. There's no mic. There's nothing high def. There's nothing, you know, this isn't a high level high def recording. This is just a simple um, iPhone recording to get uh, some examples for you guys. Okay, so what we'll, we'll do is start at the current settings, which is where we left off in the front panel description. And I'll uh, adjust some of the things like gain style, compressed raw, aura, those types of things to show you what they do. And then once we go through all those features, I'll start dialing the amp into different tones uh, to give you an idea what those, what those are. So let's start here. Uh, this is a good, you know, higher gain rhythm tone, a lot of clarity, a lot of definition. <laughs> Okay, so let, let's start with the gain style control to uh, get an idea of what that does. Um, we're going to turn it to this full left now, so it's got uh, the, the biggest, most open diodes uh, settings now. We'll start down to the right while I, while I play a couple riffs and you can see what it does. that up sometimes it doesn't come across on recording as well but in the room it's extremely noticeable but you can see the uh, the difference in the settings of that we'll go back to uh, the first game style setting and then we'll play with the compressed raw control so now that we've selected our dial with game style we're going to adjust how much that dial is affecting the circuit starting off at uh, one <laughs> You can see when I stop playing the app, it's, it's really quiet. There's no weird, you know, uh, hisses or weird noises. Hopefully you can hear the 
the changes in that as well on the camera, but uh, pretty significant difference. There's really a lot of range in this control. Uh, next we'll go to Aura. Uh, we're at 11 o'clock now. We'll, we'll start dropping it lower to sharpen the attack. Thins out the, the, the tone a little bit when you go down, and then we'll turn it back up. <laughs> Feel. I don't know how it's going to come across in recording, probably not very well. That's more of a feel thing, but I can really feel the string starting to get a sharper attack, more clanky um, under the fingers. change in the attack. Um, again, I don't know how it comes across, but it's, it's very noticeable. Um, pulling it, again, is going to add compression to sag. I'm not going to do that in recording because you probably won't. Um, have, it won't have much of an effect uh, audibly under the camera. Okay, so let's, let's play with the negative feedback. You can see the range in that. turn really high up <clears throat> it gets really cutting and really bright so what we could do to, to compensate for that to make the overall EQ a little bit more balanced is we can bump let's say signal enhance so we're in normal now which as we know raises or increases the upper mid range let's switch it to deep and we're gonna get a lot more of a low-end bump let's try that with the higher negative feedback <laughs> the recording but in the room it's totally significant it sounds really good on deep with the negative feedback turned up so let's turn the negative feedback down to about six and a half uh, depth is pretty self-explanatory i guess we don't need to go over each individual control um depth frequency we'll see if that how that comes across uh, we'll start in tight we'll go to mid and then deep <laughs> significant change in the room deep has a lot more of a um it's got a greasier feel to it actually has a really good feel to it for um you know tight um percussive chord work it's, it's really really nice i like it a lot uh, let's go back to tight um mid structure um full focus and medium we're in medium now uh, i'll switch between them again don't know how it's going to come through but we'll try it <laughs> Super razor tight. I mean, it's just super sharp on the attack. The tracking is really fast. I mean, you can play single notes really quickly, and it doesn't doesn't lag or slow down. Let's go to 
Strom. some low mid-range punch at the expense of the tightness and sharpness of the low strings. So it's just finding that balance of where you want to be as far as a uh, feel and, and response. Okay, so we're in classic mode now. Just going to flip through these um, with just a switch only. I mean, to get other low gain tones and it will adjust other parameters of the amp in conjunction with the voicing switch. But just to get an idea of what it does, um, let's start on vintage. Actually, we'll stay on classic where we're at as a baseline and switch to vintage and then modern. <laughs> Vintage with lower gain, fatter. Okay, some sloppy playing there, but regardless, you get the idea. Um, it knocks the gain back a significant amount, it gets fuller. Uh, more of that, you know, more vintage tone. Now we'll go to modern. This is going to be more saturated, um, the highest gain setting. some leads in with the rhythm because it gets this more liquidy feel and gets uh, you know, that nice compressed um, feel under the fingers. Um, let's let's play with the gain trim control. We'll, we'll increase the saturation um, between say six and ten on the gain trim setting. <laughs> A lot of saturation, but it's still really clear. super clear and articulate still. It's not getting muddy, it's not getting, you know, weird frequencies. It's, it's still sounding really, really good. Um, let's turn this back to, let's say seven, and then we'll play with the fourth game stage a little bit at this setting. Again, you can activate the fourth game stage on this amp at any point as you want to. When you have it set for cleans, you have it set for blues, you can always hit the fourth game stage to give it a little bit more push, which is really useful. Um, we'll plug in a Telecaster lately, or later we'll get Cleanish type tones, we'll hit that fourth gain stage to get a little bit of breakup and get some bluesy type tones. It's it's really cool. So let's uh let's activate the fourth stage. <laughs> Okay, 
back off. Okay, it's, it's got a lot of gain with that fourth gain stage in, in, engaged. It doesn't get super noisy, it doesn't get overbearing, and it still stays um, dynamic and has a lot of clarity. Um, we'll try pull cut, and you can uh, see how that knocks the gain back just a, just a tad. super tight still stays super dynamic it just doesn't have that you know just cuts back the gain the brightness just a tad <laughs> Context when I pushed it back in, it, it adds that, that gain, that brightness. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch out guitars. Um, we'll probably play an R9 with a uh, little lower output pickup and we'll try to get some uh, mid gain tones. Okay, I've got my uh, R9 plugged in with a Tone Nerd Roxy bridge pickup. Uh, check out Tone Nerd, uh, Scott makes amazing pickups. Uh, one of my favorites, actually, is my favorite pickup. It's what I use, this guitar and this pickup where I use to voice all my amps. Whether it's mods or building amps, this is what I use because I just love the, uh, the response from the pickup so much. It's clear, has a lot of output. Uh, this one's around, I want to say 16.5 to 17K with an El Nico 5 magnet. It just sounds great. So what I'll do is start back at the same settings as we used for the last clip with the lower tuned Les Paul with a higher uh, output pickup. Just to give a baseline to start with. And I also want to show how much the amp cleans up. Um, so I'm going to keep these higher gain settings and then roll the volume back to see how it cleans up. And then I'm going to adjust, uh, I'm going to turn the two gains down a bit, switch to vintage on the voicing and raise the compressed raw knob just a little bit. Uh, when you go to lower gain tones, having the compressed raw higher is, is, is nice because it opens the tone up a little bit and releases some of the compression. Um, one of the drawbacks of having diodes completely in the circuit all the time is it's tough to get the lower gain tones like the older 800 tones because it's just, it's got too much compression in there to really open up. So. Let's give a baseline tone, roll the volume back, and then we'll switch to a lower gain tone. super high gain tone to a lower mid gain type tone with just adjusting a couple controls just the two gains the voicing switch and the compressed raw you can get way more wide variety of tones by adjusting the micro switches adjusting the aura the gain style negative feedback i mean we can we can go way way further to achieve um you know exactly what you want to hear so i'll, I'll play with a couple of those things um, like the negative feedback and some of the switches <laughs> Thank you. 
switching back and forth uh, for a second there between neck and um, bridge pickup just to get some more bluesy type tones. I'm going to make it a little fatter. I'm going to roll the aura up, um, maybe raise the bass up a bit um, in the mids. <laughs> Push 800 type of gain level um, when you're getting to this point. It's a comparison as to where we uh, where we were. couple of simple tweaks of the controls. I mean, there's way more in there. There's a lot more in there. Um, if you really want to, you know, start tweaking more knobs, but uh, it's a pretty wide range just with turning a couple of controls. Um, next, I'm going to grab a Tele, and then we'll plug that in and get some uh, cleanish low gain tones. All right, now I've got a GT11 Custom Shop Telecaster with twisted Tele pickups uh, plugged in. Uh, what I've done is I have dropped the gains both down to around two, two and a half. Uh, preamp is pulled out uh, to cut the gain back. Compressed draws turned all the way up. Um, the less diodes you have, the cleaner, cleaner the circuit's going to be, or cleaner the tone's going to be. So taking those all the way out is, is good for uh, low gain tones. Likewise, with gain style turned all the way to the left, is going to give you the cleanest tones. Um, I have Aura set at around 1 o'clock. Uh, what else do we change? Let's see, we have voicing on, on vintage. Mid structures on focus. I like focus with lower gain tones because it cuts the, uh, the low mid a little bit and makes it a little more clear. Signal, signal enhances off to reduce the gain, and depth frequency is in deep. It's a little bit of a mid scoop, so it gives you that fender blackface type of uh, tone. Uh, negative feedbacks uh, rolled back a bit. Um, bass is up, and I've got mids dialed back to you know like two and a half. They're pretty low to get that scooped um, clean tone. So this is straight in um, with uh, these settings uh, and a Telecaster. <laughs> So for a single channel amp, um, to go to the extremes of that much high gain down to a clean tone like that, I, I mean, I think it's pretty unheard of um, to get that flexibility. It's, it's really got an extremely wide um, range of tones. It's, it was designed this way from the beginning, and this it didn't happen on accident. Um, I've always wanted to have a single channel that had that much range in it that where I could just you know really easily dial it back and get everything in between. Um, again, it's not easy to do, but um, it, it can be done, obviously. Um, what I'm going to do is now go from the clean, activate the fourth stage, and you'll see how it just adds a little grit to it and gets a little uh, maybe bluesier sounding. So bass tone. <laughs>
Can I back off? Alright guys, I hope that helps you um, get a little feel for the way the amp works and shows you the versatility of it and the tones that are available. We didn't touch on nearly everything that's available on the amp, but uh, that could take a long, long time. So anyways, I hope you had fun with it. Any questions, let me know. Um, any suggestions, let me know um, and have fun with it.